You're listening to the Hour of the Time. I'm William Cooper. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Well, some uh, strange things have been happening. Our uh, web servers for our Internet broadcast were hacked and taken down. And uh, we had uh, trace routers in place, and uh, so we know who did it. Our uh, website, WilliamCooper.net, was also hacked, and uh, they attempted to take it down, but our security measures there prevented them from doing it. We also had trace routers running there, and we can identify anybody who ever visits the website and exactly what they do. And uh, uh, without cookies or anything else, it's just a security uh, thing that we have to prevent people from uh, really screwing around with us. The only thing that happened with the website is they actively uh, and actually did prevent us from uploading any new pages or updating any pages for a while. And uh, until we were able to discover what they had uh, what they had put on the server to cause it to do that, and uh, and uh, eliminate it, the trace routes are very revealing, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, they lead to two different places. One place is Austin, Texas. <laughs> Isn't that a coincidence with the series we're doing here now, and uh, with the fact that Alex Jones has bragged on many occasions. Uh, that he lives in the Silicon Valley of Texas, that Austin is the Silicon Valley of Texas, and that he has friends that can hack into anything. He's made those statements openly on the air. Uh, the second place was the Department of Defense. So there's uh, two groups of people who were very actively interested in uh, stopping people from hearing the series that we've been doing over the last couple of days and the final uh, one tonight. We have security measures in tonight. It's going to be very hard to take down the web servers that are broadcasting the hour of the time, uh, but they may try. Uh, tonight is going to open your eyes. It's going to reveal something to you that uh, is just absolutely astounding, uh, along with the fact that they tried to stop us from broadcasting this information on the web and uh, have been jamming this frequency for the last two nights. Uh, we have also, through our friends who are ham operators who have radio direction finders, uh, traced the, uh, the jamming directly uh, to military installations. And uh, the fact that they tried to hack into our website and shut it down uh, tells a pretty big story about uh, the importance of what you're going to hear tonight. So sit back, get comfortable, pay attention. This is going to literally blow your mind. Cash machines are failing in uh, Britain and now other European countries. They're finding large amounts of explosives in France. Uh, Vladimir Putin, uh, who is known as Vladimir the Ruthless, and using all his profanity on national TV, you name it, we won't read the profanity here, uh, but we've got it. Uh, this person is on an unbelievable power trip and resembles a demon. He is a creature of the IMF and the World Bank and international communism. He is the former KGB head. And this information is vital, ladies and gentlemen. We are seeing the New World Order uh, really come out in full force. More wars than have been in the last 50 years are going on right now. The war in Chechnya is raging in Grozny with, well, reports of hundreds of thousands dying, uh, 20 to 40,000 civilians trapped in the city. Russian hinds are being shot down. Tanks are being blown to bits. Uh, massive uh, grod, unguided rocket attacks are being launched from the city indiscriminately right now. Air and artillery bombardments as well. Uh, it's absolutely out of control. It is pandemic, ladies and gentlemen. 
I'll, I'll give you the news first on Y2K. The newest development, the Pennsylvania nuclear plant has been shut down. Um, one of the main uh, systems transferring the power from it uh, failed, but they say it's not a Y2K problem. And the things I'm experiencing here in Austin, Texas, the shelves are empty of water and some gas stations are running out of fuel. Uh, here in Central Texas uh, and in Minneapolis, Minnesota, the shortwave is basically down, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, went off right as I went on the air. The big news on Y2K. Then we'll start going to your calls. 800-259-9231. 800-259-9231. All right, let's go ahead and get to this article. Associated Press, uh, this came out at 7.22 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Today, December 31st, 1999, Pennsylvania nuclear plant shut down one of the two nuclear reactors at Pico Energy Co.'s Limerick Generating Station has shut down uh, this morning after a piece of equipment failed. Company spokesman Neil McDermott said the problem was not Y2K related. It was declared an unusual event, the least serious emergency classification of a nuclear power plant. They've got to have a serious emergency to shut down a plant, ladies and gentlemen. You power one down, you're not going to power it up for at least days. Um, it was declared an unusual event. At 2.55 a.m., shutdown occurred when an insulator on the main generator transformer from Limerick 2 failed. We had reports yesterday of this. Off the record, I would not report it, but I had it from a good source that this plant was having problem along with four other plants. I may just go ahead and report it here. Um, I mean, what do we get good information here? This has been going on for days. Uh, from our information, it is not this, this transformer that they're talking about. They wouldn't just shut a plant down over that. Something serious may be going on there. So that the central government, known as the federal government, the occupational government uh, in Washington, D.C., has set up a huge $50 million command bunker hooked into all the FEMA boxes that can take over all the shortwave uh, broadcast and commercial AM and FM stations as well as television broadcast stations. And we hope they do not activate that. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, police and military are on high alert, running around looking for supposed boogeymen and terrorists under every rock. Uh, military uh, are highly visible now. Uh, yes, ladies and gentlemen, there are trains of military equipment moving into Austin. Uh, two nights ago, on Wednesday night, the Fox News reported that the airport will be used as a massive holding facility for troublemakers or rioters here in Austin that have no history of riots. They need to get that country locked down so they can stage the election for Vladimir Putin. I mean, this guy is a demon. Have you seen this guy? It's just how he's raging with power. I'm Alex Jones. I'm your host. I'm just one of the great hosts here on the GCN Radio Network, and I've been very passionate today because I can't even keep track of all the developing news that is coming in. I'm not going to get into that. I'm not even going to say it's, it's six to seven reactors across the country. Um... I'm not even going it, it, to, right. it, it's bad, and I, I got this news about the Pennsylvania plant early yesterday, got it again off air, confirmed it with someone that is 99% accurate, about like I am, trying to report the truth, and now I've got the Associated Press saying, well, they shut the whole plant down, but uh, they call it, um, they call it an, an unusual event, the least serious emergency classification of a nuclear power plant. Well, it's got to be pretty bad for them to power a plant down. Time is getting shorter until Y2K. If you want to be sure your family and loved ones weather the potential Y2K storm of delays, shortages, or interruptions of services, then now is the time to stock up on emergency supplies and a home food reserve. As the developments uh, move forward with this Y2K and this gear up for uh, clamping down in America and Russia and around the world by my globalist forces will be bringing you the news as long as we're here on the air. Now pretty much dictator and controller uh, of Russia publicly. And here in America, they're gearing up and bracing for terrorism and militarizing everything in front of us. So it's happening there. It's happening here. There they're using the war with Chechnya. Here they're using Y2K and the threat of terrorism. Oh, this is extremely serious. Two weeks ago, Topol M, 6,200-mile super range, multiple warhead, Newest design U.S. clone technology missiles were deployed across Russia. They're mobile. Uh, these are first strike type systems. They're also designed to uh, uh, survive several strikes from America or any other nation. They're deploying these, and Yeltsin openly has been threatening us weekly to nuke us. I mean, it's just getting insane. Uh, and absolutely, this looks like just one more ratchet on the takeover of America. 
And yes, um, they have an extreme strong man in, KGB leader, running Russia right now. They have deployed their missiles against us and their submarines and have already delivered uh, fully functional missile cruisers to China. Yes, he uh, took, the, took the codes off and he took away our first strike capability. By first strike, that means if missiles are in the air, mm -hmm. let's say 4,000 of them. The Russians have got a lot more than that. Right. 4,000 missiles coming in, subs launching, uh, suitcases going off. Uh, we have to wait until we absorb the first strike that will mean virtual annihilation to our military. Uh, brass, I know you're CFR. You've been told you'll be able to be in the bunker if they go to this level. I don't know if they'll do it. It may just be ratcheting down the global system. All I know is this. Boris Yeltsin, at 4 o'clock in the morning, as the Russian time zone in its eastern area near Japan was entering into Y2K, uh, he resigned, and now Vladimir Putin, known as Vladimir the Ruthless uh, by the Russian people, uh, is now taking the reins of power, supreme power in Russia, and he is a former KGB chief. There's something else I want to tell you, Alex. Well, hold on just a second. Okay. I mean, this is extremely serious. Again, I was getting this information, what you just said two days ago, and I, and I got it even more. I ignored it then, then I got it yesterday, uh, and now it's in the Associated Press that in Pennsylvania, uh, where you're calling from, in the city you're calling from, one of two nuclear reactors at Pico's Energy Co. Limerick Generating Station was shut down uh, this morning after a piece of equipment failed. And they're saying it's non-Y2K related. This is just unbelievable. One other thing. I heard Bo Grice say this morning that Russia said if their power goes out that they're going to blame us and they're going to set off their nuclear warheads. Well, I didn't hear that, but I would be interested uh, to um, to have any details. Uh, do you have the details of what Colonel Greit said? No, that's all I heard him say was that they said if they had a power blackout, they'd blame it on us. I know they're threatening to nuke us every single week. I've read the Associated Press, Reuters, Interfax News Agency, London Times articles here. I mean, I read Yeltsin and Jiang Zemin's quotes, the dictator of China and their... They're, they're saying, we'll, we'll nuke you. I mean, it's they spell it out. We will hit you with nuclear weapons. We reserve the right to hit you. Three weeks ago, their uh, head of other missile forces uh, said, we reserve the right to nuke you first. Uh, their currency is plunging. The Egyptian pound is plunging against the dollar, uh, the Japanese yen, the Deutsch uh, mark, and the um, just all of it. It's it's And the same thing is starting to develop here in America. Uh, I, many of the gas stations here in Austin have the little uh, gloves over the pumps saying they're out of fuel. You n never see this in Austin, Texas. Right here in South Austin, I've seen several stations. Uh, we don't know if this is just a Y2K that was here. Um, just bizarre behavior. Americans standing up as Russia threatens to attack us with nuclear weapons, as nuclear power plants, at least one, are being shut down. Um, as the military runs around with the police and the FBI saying terrorism is imminent, and some would characterize us as dangerous because we report the facts. Absolutely out of control. Uh, just maintain your readiness, be calm, defend your family, defend your country, but uh, doing a fabulous job. He is consulting with people that he knows personally, a lot of former military people that now own radio companies. And, uh, in fact, I'm not even going to say who the individual is. I'm sure he can call in publicly. I just don't want to uh, give a lot of folks' names out on the air. Uh, they have activated a powerful uh, Cold War uh, radar system in the North Pole region. Uh, that is something that is grounding out shortwave. The entire 9400 band all throughout the uh, 9.4000 up to 9. Point, uh, yeah, I, I mean, they are, the military traffic is everywhere right now, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, scrambled. We've got superpower uh, radar systems, nuclear systems up. And perhaps our military is refused. It was Clinton that shut down that the Cold War radar system. It's now back up from people that actually worked in there. We have it confirmed from the sound and where it's coming from, from experts. Fresno, where our servers are located, is in the middle of a blackout. Ladies and gentlemen, we're off the Internet. Uh, this is just absolutely out of control. That's why the commercial stations are so important. Paul, more information coming at you on the other side as Y2K develops. 
Many of you have been preparing for the worst of times, putting away storable foods and water. While this makes perfect sense, we at Midas Resources urge you to consider the possibility of having to flee for your lives. Though the very prospect of this sounds grim, the possibilities are more than remote. Asian countries now having long-range nuclear bombs, a politically unstable Russia, and an increasing presence of NATO here on U.S. soils could spark a ground war in the West. If Big Brother, mainstream media, government cover-ups. You want answers? Well, so does he. He's Alex Jones on the GCN Radio Network. And now, live from Austin, Texas, Alex Jones. Bringing you continuing, unfiltered, unabashed reality. I am Alex Jones. I am your host. From his Central Texas Command Center, deep behind enemy lines, the information war continues. And now, back to Alex Jones on the GTN Radio Network. All right, commercial stations, if you're just now joining us after your news, um, to the micros out there and everybody else, America is under siege right now. Uh, they have put up so much uh, chaos. Uh, and so many smoke screens, I don't even know exactly what's going to happen, and I've always been good at analysis. We know at least one nuclear power plant in Pennsylvania has been shut down, according to the Associated Press. I was told a completely different story yesterday, off air, by a good source, uh, that, that this plant had already been shut down. Uh, they're now telling us it happened early uh, this morning at 2.55 a.m. Eastern Time. Egypt's having basic runs on the banks, according to the information I have. The AP's got a whitewash of it. But uh, the, the president, uh, Hajim Mubarak, is telling people to maintain calm. Uh, Fresno, California, where our Internet uh, servers are, are down. The power is off in the city. Um, serious developments, cash machines, uh, ATMs, credit card machines having problems in Europe. She called frantically yesterday saying, I oh, uh, don't want you to leave Harrison, Arkansas. My girlfriend works there. I don't want you to leave. I don't want you to leave. Uh, they've got martial law signs. We just found out down at the Arkansas Highway Transportation Department. And we said, well, we thought at first she had probably seen her tape because she's got kind of like got her head in the sand. And yesterday, up and down Highway 65, I was seeing Arkansas Highway Transportation Department vehicles all over the place and have been seeing them ever since the 28th. And uh, this girl here just does not believe in that stuff now. She's totally going nuts over it. So you've known this person for a long time, and she was a doubting Thomas, and now she claims she has personally seen the martial law signs. Uh, she has it, but her friend that works for the Arkansas Highway Transportation Department called and told her they just delivered them. And we, we go up and down the highway uh, a lot, and it just it looks kind of spooky, you know. When you... I hear you, sir. Hey, right here in Austin, Texas, they've announced that it's a basic concentration camp uh, at Robert Mueller Airport. Anybody that lives in Central Texas, go take a look at it. Uh, former military officer and former police officer, retired gentleman that owns, well, let's just say a company. He does services for the military. I've known the guy for years, upstanding individual, happily married Christian man. He told me two nights ago that he was out at Fort Hood during the day doing work, where I know he is uh, routinely the largest Army base uh, that America has. And there were giant trains, uh, just long lines of trains with flat cars loaded with APCs and LAVs. That's armored personnel carriers and light armored vehicles. The marine type, uh, uh, just just all over the place. Uh, they have flatbed trailers. They have uh, large uh, cattle trailer type uh, situations, navy blue or black, uh, lined up. You can tell, ladies and gentlemen, I'm a little bit excited here today and trying to maintain my calm. Yeah, they're 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 doing they're turning the heat up on this thing now. And it's at war ten, Alex. And uh, reason I called in today, I got another confirmation uh, real early this morning. In fact, before the sun even come up, a gentleman called me out of Michigan uh, about the power plant situation, what we were talking about yesterday out in western Kentucky. Well, he called me about a power plant up in Michigan. Exactly. And this one here, one of the ones in Michigan, uh, this one that's in question here that I'm talking about, we have confirmation when given the order, they will shut this one down. And that, that newspaper article that you were talking about, about that nuclear plant in Pennsylvania, they can't shut them things down overnight, Alex. Yesterday I got it from other individuals. I, I'm not going to... But now they admit it's got a problem. They say it's not Y2K related. They've just shut it down. And you're right. They have to shut these things down over a period of time. Uh, you know, now is not the time for somebody to go do something stupid. Now's the time to kick back in front of the fireplace or campfire or whatever. 
you know, tell a few Bill and Monica jokes and sit back and wait and watch what they do because until you know what they do, you don't know how to react. And if somebody goes off and does something stupid, it's going to ruin it for the whole country. And if you haven't gotten your supply of potassium iodine, uh, I think that's the correct technical term. I've got several bottles of it. Uh, that's what they issue the military, and they used to issue people in this country with civil defense in case of Russian nuclear attack. Uh, definitely is the time now to get that. But I know this. The Russians have been threatening the nukes publicly to their people, hyping them up against us, deploying their missiles against us, uh, saying they reserve the right to strike first. Clinton then responds, well, uh, we will not strike until we've already been hit. We will not survive a total all-out first strike. No, I don't think so. If we do, it'll be very, very few. Well, I'm sitting right here in Austin, in the middle of a major city center. You can say bye-bye to Alex Jones if we get hit. This is, this is the Silicon Hills of Texas. Um... He's, he's president, he's, he's over the Duma, the Kremlin, the whole nine yards. Toll-free number, are you having power outages in your area? Are you uh, experiencing troubles? Are you out of gasoline? Are you out of water in your grocery stores like we are by and large here in Austin, Texas? Power in Fresno is off in the downtown city area uh, where we have a microwave relay tower hooked into to, uh, uh, to the huge server that runs our systems. Uh, and one of the worst developments on top of Russia threatening nukes now and their new militarized posture with China against us, uh, and both their presidents threatening us, President Boris Yeltsin resigned at 4 o'clock Central Standard Time this morning, and Vladimir Putin, known as Vladimir the Ruthless, stepped in to the reins of power. The Russians for the past 10 years have been building bunkers and supposedly... Well, it was in the New York Times last year that they're building the biggest bunker known to man in the uh, in the Ural Mountains. Right. I believe that's supposedly the mountain Supposedly change. they can accommodate their entire population. Now, I don't know if that's... Well, I know this. Sure. Back in the 40s, 50s, 60s, they were building bunkers for Americans. They were storing them with food. They were training children right. uh, against the threat that was created by the bankers. And in the last 20 years or so, 30 years, they stopped the education of uh, people in the public schools and the private schools. Uh, and now, your designated nuclear fallout shelter in any major city, you can see the signs if you look carefully enough. They'll be like a small, uh, about 10 inches long, 8 inches tall, little sign will say nuclear fallout shelter will be a parking garage. So they can move in later and pull out all the rotten skeletons after they emerge from the... Uh, Switzerland, where they have total gun rights and incredibly low crime. Uh, I guess the elite likes to home for themselves. It's safe. Uh, they have giant underground bases stocked for two years uh, with recreation courts and the whole nine yards deep underground for the entire population. Here it is right here. I've got 50 articles. Let, let me read it to you. It's uh, uh, Pennsylvania nuclear plant shut down. The Associated Press, Friday, December 31st. It's up on my website, infowars.com. My site's up, isn't it? I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm a little paranoid right now. The Associated Press, Friday, December 31st, 1999, 7.22 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, the first to break the story. One of the two nuclear reactors at PECO's, P-E-CO's, Energy Co's, Limerick Generating Station was shut down this morning after a piece of equipment failed. Company spokesman, uh, big Y2K rollover. We've got nuclear power plant problems in PA, shutdown. Uh, we had power outages out in Fresno, California, that knocked our internet off for about four hours. Back back up. Um, hi, Alex. I've just been listening to your show, and I've got a few questions about what you've been talking about today. Um, what's with this Russia threatening the nuke us? Oh my gosh, are you online? Do you have a computer? Um, no, I'm not online. I've been listening to you. Well, well, I mean, I could go pull them off in my archives, uh, even in my main page, uh, in sub pages, more news sections. I, there are literally, I mean, every week I've been reading two or three articles where Jiang Zemin in China is threatening the nukes. Yeltsin has been threatening the nukes every week until he resigned at 4 o'clock Central Time this morning. Um, they had deployed their Topolin missile two and a half weeks ago against this long range, 6,200 mile intercontinental ballistics, the newest design with U.S. clone technology. Um, you've got the head of their missile systems, their top general. Uh, threatening the nukes, saying he reserved first strike authority um, for absolutely no reason to attack us. It was also reported a local person caught it on CNN. A power plant has been blown up. In Oregon. 
Okay, we need to get CNN on. Uh, I'm sure at the studios at GCN, they're checking that out. Uh, boy, Clinton's pulled it. Oh, man, this has happened. But uh, that's, that's the report that I got, and uh, two other people uh, on local repeaters verified it. So I thought that's I'd Oregon, and they're going to say... They're going to say that one of Bin Laden's terrorists slipped through. I've been stating for years, Bin Laden is a known CIA asset. That's public record. But I firmly side uh, on the fact that we need to go ahead and just report the truth. But it creates a panic, it does. Should have warned people earlier. And I just heard on the way home an interview on the uh, San Francisco radio station from a power official from the Northeast. And what he said happened that was that somebody loosened a guide wire on a, on a power pole. And it fell over, and uh, I guess only momentarily interrupted power. The computer switched, switched it to an alternate route. But and they loosened. know that someone loosened it. That's why it fell off. Yes. A terrorist <laughs> knocked the power line down. Uh, we've got uh, Yeltsin has resigned. The KGB chief, Vladimir Putin, the ruthless, as he's known, has taken full command of Russia. Now the figurehead puppet that couldn't even talk or stand has been removed. And uh, Putin is running around enjoying himself, uh, sitting on top of that captive population. Flipping around, and they weren't really giving us any news about the mass Y2K problems that are being reported across the globe that are being covered up in mainstream media and relegated to the back pages uh, of the news wires. But I'm flipping around, and on PBS here locally in town, I don't know if it's on in other areas around the country, but on public broadcasting, the elite likes to see their garbage. They were going, we worship the sun, we worship Antibeast. Uh, I mean, this is out of control. Uh, two nights ago, Wednesday night on Fox News, they showed the old airport, Robert Mueller, right in the middle of town. He used to live in Austin. Michael, you know how big it is. They shut this thing down three months ago, even though the new airport wasn't done, wasn't completed. And they go, here are the new hangars and uh, the payment facilities for any troublemakers during the new millennium. Rioters or kooks or terrorists. And they show uh, these... Barbed wire fences, chain link fences inside of the hangars, Michael, and shackles on the ground, concreted into the ground, uh, like something out of a slave galley or something uh, that you would see 3,000 years ago. Well, Michael, uh, we've seen major procrastination. Uh, I think what we said is being borne out to be true. In fact, this morning I'm listening to ABC News at about 6 driving, and suddenly I hear him report that... Um, Oh, now I'm losing my mind. What's the big island? New Zealand off the coast of Australia. Right. They were first to be hit. They had their power out for hours uh, in some areas, just a few minutes in others. The power's been going off intermittently in South Austin uh, for the last two weeks here in Central Texas. And then the big news. That's right. In Pennsylvania, a nuclear power plant shut down. Uh, they shut down at uh, 2 55 in the morning. I didn't hear that last night, and they're saying it's not Y2K related. No, of course not. It's, it's something else, I'm sure. Yeah, I mean, what, I mean, a, a plant might shut down every 10 years in this country, and this Vladimir Putin is known by the Russian people. Oh man, now we're in trouble with Vladimir at the helm. Here's the guy who said when we were uh, starting to, 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 you know, rattle, I guess, our own sabers over here, talking about what they were doing over in Grozny, and he said, and I quote, "You better back down, or we'll just nuke you." Uh, he also he also said about Chechnya, well, I can't use those words on the radio, even though it's from AFP, AP, UPI, uh, and uh, ITAR-TAS, that's the Russian right. news agency. Well, I'm sitting here reading the Associated Press report about how they, they turn the plant off, but it has nothing to do nothing to do with Y2K. They're just shutting plants down and powers off in many different areas across the country. In fact, I've confirmed that a lot of the cable systems aren't working and satellites are down. And uh, here's one for you guys wondering, are you poo-pooers, you naysayers about Y2K? Here you go. Japan. Minor fault struck two nuclear power plants in Japan just seconds after the clock ticked into 2000 on Saturday, officials said. Government and company officials launched investigations into whether the glitches were related to the millennium bug. Most likely not. I'm sure it's just a coincidence, right? Winky, winky. <laughs> huh? What are you going to do, huh? Everything's winky, winky. I'll tell you what it really boils down to, folks. You've got to give it about a week to find out what's really going on with this Y2K. You'll get little bits and pieces here and there. And, uh, I, and then a month from now, we'll really know what the scope was. Uh, uh, I would just like to say to anyone that lives inside of a nuclear power plant, pack up and go somewhere else for the weekend. I mean, incredible things are happening. The store shelves are bare in Austin, Texas, have been for 
Well, ever since yesterday, at least, I haven't been in the store in a few days. Gas is running out. They're announcing on Fox News if you're bad, they're going to put you in a... They're going to bolt you to a uh, pipe coming out of the ground at the airport in some cold uh, uh, hangar. Boy, they better not do that up here in Minnesota. You get dang cold up here they do that. Well, yeah, it's really about 50, 60 degrees. But my point is... I mean, there are just incredible things are happening. The military is serving search warrants now in 77 Texas counties. And it's just, we got nuclear power plants shutting down. And well, my point is, I sit on my turf. Now, sure, if, uh, you know, if, if there's a big flash and, and, and we get hit with a nuke, then I'll feel sorry for what I did. And, you know, the Russians are threatening to nuke us right now. But one of the things I didn't prepare for when it comes to Y2K is whether or not nukes will be launched over here or my nuclear power plants will go off. It's one of those things you look at and go, well... You can only really prepare for so much, and uh, those are the types of things that if I knew the nukes were coming, well, I think I'd just grab the kids, give them a quick hug and a kiss, and step out into the street like the Well, they've got uh, the armored personnel carriers and LAVs loading on the flat cars out at Fort Hood. Well, I, I uh, checked out the grocery store. I, that's what I, what I just did. And How was that? Was the grocery store there still there? And a whole lot of bread and stuff is... Some of it's getting pretty pretty down, I would say. Well, buy up all you can. Uh, Don? I, I, well, buy up all you can. Uh, well, Don? I've had, it, I've had it already. For the call, Don, we appreciate it. We've got to jump on ahead to a guy here who tells us that there are currently missiles being launched. And where did you hear that from, Blake? Well, let's bring him in. It's Scott from Illinois. Scott, thanks for stopping by. What's going on? How you doing? Uh, ABC just had a uh, special on there uh, saying that uh, they had the guy in front of the command center in uh, Cheyenne Mountain, uh, General, out there saying that early in the day that there was five missiles that were launched. Uh, he wouldn't say where they were. Uh, funny you didn't hear about that. Pardon? I said it's kind of funny you didn't hear about that one. I mean, you know, if five missiles got launched and a general is out in front of uh, Cheyenne Mountain telling yeah, us this. Yeah, well, this was just about five minutes ago they said it on Channel 7. Well, they didn't happen to mention which direction they were going or where they were coming from. Well, today. one of the reporters, they asked uh, where they were coming from, where they were going to, what kind of missiles, and he said, I can't give out that information. Oh, God forbid you tell anybody before they get nuked. I mean, you know, <laughs> well, five missiles information. as well. We can't trust the American people with that information, uh, if this is true, just like the special operations training with Russians in South Texas when they're burning buildings and laying siege to towns, all part of routine training, of course. Um, you know, we can't tell the American people, but we've got to have uh, Russian uh, special forces in uh, the NORAD defense bunkers and systems. You know, that's all public news. It's because we can trust the Russians. They're good people. Oh, of course they are. The Russians are my friends. I, I've always felt that way starting back in grade school, and they told us you've got to hide underneath a desk because of our friends over there in uh, well, the Soviet Union. Well, when Vladimir is not threatening the nukes, or Yeltsin isn't, or if it's not Jiang Zemin, president of the Chicoms, uh, you know, these are... Oh, and Clinton says right after Vladimir threatens the nukes, uh, that, that's another statement, he just made that again. Mom's listening to this program, I think, today, Alex, and she's going to hate to hear me say this, but you elect me president, I'll say it one more time, I'll nuke him first. I'll push the damn button as soon as I take the oath. Well, you know, Clinton, the last word is out of my mouth. I'm opening up that football, and I'm going to start launching, man. Well, I'll tell you this. The Russians have been threatening. They now reserve the first strike right for no reason to hit us. And Clinton says he will absorb the first strike. He's such a good little communist. Well, he's, see, that's good. I hope that one of those five missiles then is headed towards his place and not mine. Okay. I've had a boy. Hey, uh, I'm verifying what that fellow said. I do have a TV in this camp, and um, that, that general was at Cheyenne Mountain, Colorado Springs. And uh, he shocked even the uh, the news network personnel there, uh, Peter Jennings. He said that he was shocked by what he said. All right, that's it. I've got to get serious. I'll be back in two minutes. I'm going to put ABC on. Three. Uh, um, you do that, you mainstream sucker. Yeah. No, I mean, uh, if they're launching missiles and they're announcing it, now did they just oh, go to sure, sure, all did the they time. just go to break? Five missiles have been launched. We can't tell you from where or where they're going. We're going to jump to Mark Cornkey calling in from Michigan. How are you, Mark? Hey, guys. Sounds like we've been busy. First of all, the ABC report did have a uh, NORAD commander who came up and online as part of the Space Command specifically talking about... It's now the, taken over all the services. Now we've got something called Space Command running everything. Actually, about two years ago, we got hold of a lot of their patches. So don't worry, guys. We can look just like them when the time comes. <laughs> but uh, if this, we're not joking. We actually do have everything I saw in his uniform we already picked up. We look just like these guys if you want to. But... 
they did announce that there had been a uh, series of actions, but again, the, the perceived enemy is uh, obviously the American people because the foreign governments know this. If it's not the Russians at launch, the Russians know this. The Europeans know this. The we're sitting here calmly. We're sitting here calmly, and you're telling me now that it's on AB. It's on ABC News that five missiles were launched, and they aren't telling us who, where they were launched. Oh, the, they general, launched them? the general was very calm about this, obviously implying that everything's warm and fuzzy and everything had already been either handled or whatever. However, last night, our people were watching uh, the different air bases around, the United, around Michigan here in the Michigan Republic. Uh, we got several confirmed reports that last night, as of uh, oh, about 8 o'clock through to 10 o'clock, Everything and anything that was on the flight line at Salford International Guard Base was put into the air and was constantly in the air. Uh, several other bases, and again, we've been doing this for many, many years. So again, well, Mark, the big radars were turned back on just a few hours ago. Yes, part of that is that I think number one. Remember, we have more than one player in this. The Russians are not the only ones that everybody better worry about. The communist Chinese, who are the setup enemy for the long run for the last scam. Nobody ever talks about Germany. They've they've been arming in secret massively. So we've got several different countries here with the same assets and resources, and also with the same junk technology. Uh, if it goes bad, it goes bad in many different ways. And the Russians, while they do worry about us, uh, of course they are friends of the Chinese. They've always worried more about the Chinese border, but it seems they back a lot of their troops off. So somebody's playing games here, and obviously the Chinese and the Russians perceive us as the New World Order crowd does, to be the enemy. Uh, a couple other things real quickly. Well, Mark, this is insanity, Mark. Mark, I want to get back to this. You saw the ABC report? With it was just general? on, uh, in the, what, the last five minutes, six minutes? You're telling me a general at Cheyenne Mountain walks out, he says um, some type of five missiles have been launched and says that everything's wonderful, back to sports. I want to know where the yeah, five missiles fact, went. Comrade Jennings was actually looked like he'd gone into catatonic brain fart because he's trying to keep the smile on his face, the Cheshire Cat smile. When they went back to him, he goes, well, you know, all these little glitches happen. And ha, notice ha, ha. how we're all calmly sitting here right now, knowing that nuclear missiles could be about to rain down, and that little New World Order scum. Hey, hey. It would only be a handful. Oh. Okay, first of all, guys, it, what it's obviously, keep in mind, it was intended to uh, show that they, quote, unquote, have everything under control. But my problem is, again, like, as you said, uh, who launched? In other words, was it a mistake on our part? Was it a uh, ballistic submarine? And they won't tell us. They won't tell us who did it. No, I hope no it, was it sounds us. like that's a single hand, or what the Russians call a hand launch. Yeah, no offense, but I hope it was us who launched. <laughs> well, the thing here, here again is, if you've been doing what we've been doing in the Patriot Movement for as long as we have and organizing the militia, we're pretty well squared away. That's one of the reasons well, Mark, why how does Vladimir, Mark, how does Vladimir, we should talk about this after the break, how does Vladimir Putin, known as Vladimir the Ruthless, who took over at four in the morning in Russia, uh, over the Duma, the state Duma, over the Kremlin, and now as president. He's the Fuhrer. That's right. For all, in fact, interestingly enough, this was something that you'll notice the controlled press did not talk about. It was not on the horizon. So this is part of the series of what they would call, call millennial or organized shifts to the New World Order quick. And we'll keep you posted all night long on the GCN Radio Network. Mark Cornkey, thanks for the call. Well, you heard it, folks. And just at that point, what do you think was really going through the minds of all of the people who've been listening to all of this stuff build up to this point all day, who were in a state of mass hysteria expecting the...
we are once again, folks, at our uh, uh, Century Award Ceremony. Uh, I know a lot of you enjoyed our last one in the year uh, 1900. Uh, this is given out every hundred years by the hour of the time. It is uh, the Bullshit Artist of the Century Award, and uh, we're going to be uh, presenting that here in, uh, in a just, uh, just a couple of minutes. This is a very prestigious award, and as you know, we only give it out uh, once each century, so uh, there's a lot of people out there sitting on the edge of their chairs wondering if they're going to be the recipient. have the uh, envelope, please. Thank you. Oh, my God. And the, uh, the winner is... Mr. Alex Jones. All I can say, folks, from all of us here at the hour of the time, and uh, all of us uh, in our listening audience, Alex Jones, Alex Jones, you're the one. You're the one, baby. You're the one. You're on the air. Hello. Hello. Because he wasn't a fool. He knew exactly what he was doing. He knew what he was doing? Yeah, he sure did know what he was doing. Well, I mean, obviously, a lot of, most of the things we don't believe that they tell us. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. oh, really? You're sitting there listening to all that. Apparently, you're, you're an Alex Jones fan. Well, I'm not a fan. Well, it sounds like it. It's just... Uh, did you hear all of this broadcast? And you're still trying to defend this bullshit right here to me? Um, Have you got a screw loose? Not all of it. But not all of it. <laughs> the, I mean, the intention of... Like, the intention was to do just exactly what happened. Create hysterica and panic and possibly cause a legitimate state of martial law to be declared. Whether right. whether Alex Jones was an active part of it or whether he was just a stupid dupe it doesn't make any difference. That was the whole reason for the whole thing. Okay, I can see that. Yeah. Um... <clears throat> Good for you. I was starting to think there was something wrong. <laughs> no, I mean, I could see that, but uh, at the same time, there's another side to it. There is no other side to it. we got to let some more callers get in because we only got about three minutes left. Thanks for calling. And thanks for your opinion. 520-333-457. Other side to it, my butt. <laughs> oh, man. You know what? The sheeple will never stop voluntarily following the Judas goat into the slaughterhouse. Good evening, you're on the air. Good afternoon, Mr. Cooper. I see that H.G. Wells is back from the grave. Yeah, it looks like it, doesn't it? And uh, as far as Mr. Jones, I got something to say to him. And Orson Wells, he ain't. <laughs> well, I, uh, I've been listening to shortwave for 40 years. I have never, never, never heard such asinine garbage in my life on radio. Yeah. Uh, and that's why I did this series. And everybody's saying that uh, I'm doing something bad because uh, it, it, I'm, I'm backbiting another talk show host. Yeah, the, I saw the uh, TV deal with the general there, the underground clan post there, whatever. There were some missiles fired, but they were under 500 kilometers in range, which did not matter. Or, Absolutely. You know. And every one of those people who called knew it, including Mark Cornkey. Uh -huh. And none of them said it because they didn't want the listening audience to know that. But I'm telling you, this guy, Alex Jones, he is great. 
he, he should receive some kind of an award. He just did. He received the Bullshit Artist Award of the Century from the hour of the time. Uh, we, we need a better one than that one, Mr. Cooper. Well, I, <laughs> I don't know what else to get. i got to let you go. Thank you. Try and get some more people in. Thanks for calling, and thanks for your opinion. 520-333-4578 is the number. Yeah, that whole thing was a setup from the very beginning. And you heard, every time somebody called and they started to talk about something, Alex Jones would always change the subject. Even though the caller didn't mention it, he would change the subject to atomic attack from Russia. Good evening, you're on the air. Hello, Bill. This is Jeffrey from New Orleans. Hi, Jeffrey. Hey, thanks for that coffee and that fantastic uh, French donut mix. Yeah, I'm glad. I knew you'd enjoy it. That's why I said it, because you people have done so much good over the past six years. Anyway, I, was, I couldn't help laughing about what I heard tonight. Especially the fact that on that day I wasn't listening to Alex. I was listening to the uh, Sun Bowl because I happen to be an Oregon Duck fan. Uh -huh. But uh, the, the point is that he gets that he and Bab Ogrich and others get out of hand at times with all of this panicking information, and that's where they completely fall down. When we got major problems such as the fight in Miami over that little boy Gonzalez, where the Immigration Service says, says he's going to be have to be sent back to Cuba. And we have all this business about um, um, the increasing government attempts to write bills uh, on gun control and campaign finance reform that could hurt a lot of organizations and so on. Yeah. And, and then we have to, and then we have to put up with all this panicking going on. Yeah. Well, there was an agenda to it. Definitely. Oh, I'm sure there was, and the agenda, I'm sure, was to try to cause a riot, which would which would give the government justification yeah, to and the impose martial law. That's right. The military and the government were deployed. They were ready for it. They were expecting it. They wanted it, and all of these fools fell right into it. Either they were an active part of trying to make it come about, or they're some of the stupidest dupes that ever lived. Thanks for calling, Jeffrey. Oh, one other thing. I, I can't. The, we're out of time. Okay, let's go on. 520-333-457. I'm trying to get as many people in here so we can get as many different comments as we possibly can. Good evening. You're on the air. Yeah, hey, Bill. How are you doing? Good. This is Nick from North Carolina. Okay. Yeah, I've listened to Alex before on over the Internet at work. Uh-huh. He, he's all right, but you can tell where he gets a little too keyed up. What do you mean he's all right? Anybody well, who pulls a fax out of a machine without checking or verifying anything, reads it over the air like it's fact, or reads AP wire reports, and uh, and and uh, press releases from ABC and things like that, as if they're fact without any verification or checking whatsoever, and takes the word of callers who are all, who are ninety five percent wrong. Believe me, I've been doing this for years. All callers are ninety five percent wrong on anything that they say on the air. Oh, I'm not defending them. No. I'm just saying I listen to him for entertainment more than anything else. Well, good. The That's... thing I like about him is that he's fired up, and I like that kind of an attitude. But I have noticed before in the past that he does tend to take one inch and stretch it into a mile. He makes stuff up right out of clear. Yeah. Did, did you hear any yeah. of those callers say that the general said anything about nuclear missiles? Yeah, I caught on to that. I caught on to that. They didn't say a word about it, did they? No. But he no. did, didn't he? Yep. Yep, got to let you go. Thanks. Thanks for calling. Thanks, You're thanks for your opinion. Well, that's it, folks. We're out of time. This uh, was a historic broadcast tonight, and that was hard news. Probably the story of the century concerning talk radio in this country. And I hope it straightens a few people out. Y2K has completely discredited, completely discredited and wiped slick most of the patriot and Christian movement in this country. And if you don't believe that, you just listen and read and watch and see. You have screwed yourselves royal. And by God, I'm going to do everything I can to straighten it out and bring us back to legitimacy. And the only way we can do that is pin these lying bastards against the wall. And don't even try and get in my way because I'll pin you too. Good night. God bless each and every single one of you. Good night, Annie Poo and Allison. I love you dearly.